This is Jeremiah Riggins from Sanctuary Family Farms. I'm married to Katie Riggins, and we have two boys, um, Ben and Sam, who are 10 and 13 years old. In church, we've been doing a study of the Holy Spirit. When this topic was first brought up, my stomach clenched up a little and I started sweating just a bit. I know this seems like an odd reaction, but when I looked around the church, I certainly wasn't the only one. So why did I have this reaction? The first thing that comes to my mind is seeing people speaking in tongues or being prayed over and waiting for a sign that we were filled with the Holy Spirit. I have thoughts about being embarrassed or making it up instead of really being filled with the Holy Spirit. However, what really scares me is being out of control. Like I have said many times before, I don't like being told what to do or not being the one making all the decisions. As I was sitting there, God reminded me of how often my stubbornness and need for control gets in the way of me experiencing His gifts. He also reminded me of how many times I have been at this point in my life and gone the other way out of fear. So at that moment, I said, God, whatever you want me to do to have a closer relationship with you that comes through the Holy Spirit, I will do it. So far, over the last four weeks, he hasn't asked me to do anything crazy. No dancing with snakes or rolling under the pews. However, he has shown me a few things about the Holy Spirit that I would like to share with you in this blog. Gifts of the Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 11, it lists some of the gifts of the Spirit. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given into every man to profit uh, with all. For to one is given the Spirit... The word of wisdom, to another word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self same Spirit, dividing to every man uh, severally as he will. Fruits of the Spirit. In Galatians 5, 22 through 23, it says, This is about the fruit of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. In the past, I'd always thought that the only sign and need to be filled with the Holy Spirit was to receive and act in the gifts. However, as I've been studying about the Holy Spirit, I'm starting to realize that walking in the fruits of the Spirit is also a sign of the Holy Spirit working in your life. When the Holy Spirit is working in me, I have more love, joy, and peace. This shows me that He is with me, not just speaking in tongues or wisdom or healing. The gifts are real to me, and I know that when He needs them, they will be there. I can walk in the fruits of the Spirit every day by acting in the Spirit. I can show others around me how Christ would treat them. The Holy Spirit helps me to live a life that makes others want to know who Jesus is. In 1 Corinthians 13, 1-3, it says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profit me nothing. Healing. Being raised in the church, I have always known about the gift of healing. But something that had not crossed my mind before is how the Holy Spirit doesn't just work to heal our body. He also works to heal our spirit. One of the things I've noticed is that when I'm walking in the Spirit, many of the things that I struggle with in the flesh go away. When I'm focused on Jesus, I fully believe that the Spirit removes my desire for sinful behavior. I fully believe that when people ask the Spirit to work in them, there can be miraculous changes in their life, both physically and especially spiritually. In James 5, 13-15, it says, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. So what do we have to do to have the Holy Spirit in our life? We simply have to ask for it and then give in to it. Jesus, please give me your Holy Spirit. I fully surrender to your work in my life.
Holy Spirit, the mysterious third person of the Trinity, because, <clears throat> well, for the longest time, they would never refer to the Holy Spirit as he, but only as it, because they didn't personalize it. They didn't know who the Holy Spirit was. They knew of him, but not him. And when you read scriptures that Christ said, you know, this is, I do everything by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And it really brings it home to what you were saying about the practicality of the Holy Spirit, not the flamboyancy of tongues or interpreting, but the, the practicality, the day-to-day, -day, the meet and greet where the rubber meets the road. Mm -hmm. So are you finding that this is more important or more emphasis on this than just the tongues? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think I already kind of knew that, but um, I think we're always afraid of what we're going to be pressured into or asked to do or this or that or, you know, um, I think there's always a fear at the back of our mind that um, we have to do the hard stuff first because God's testing us and sometimes he lets us walk in the easy stuff first to get us ready, not just always testing us. So I certainly see that, but, you know, I think it's a me or the question. You know, is it about me and is it about what I want to show or what I want to do or what I think is important or is it about what he thinks is important? Is it about doing his work or my work? Well, you know, sometimes Jesus would not have done his work without the Holy Spirit. So mm -hmm. how in the world could I do any work for Jesus without the same Spirit? Mm -hmm. So the, what do you say to people who go, yeah, but I've seen all those excesses, those stupid Pentecostals rolling down the aisles? Yeah, so I've thought about this a long time um, or a lot since I wrote this. And I think what I say is, um, and I tell, my, I tell my kids this all the time, is you have to risk to gain. And the question is, is, is the gain on the other side worth the risk? And if you knew there was a diamond in a field, how many holes would you dig in the field to find the diamond? Would you dig one hole and say, oh, I didn't find a diamond? And then you dig two and say, oh, I didn't find a diamond. And then you dig the third one and you find the diamond. You know, how many holes are you willing to dig to find the diamond? And if you're wrong of a few of those holes, okay, as long as you find the diamond at the end of it, it's okay. And so that's probably how I would address it. So yeah, maybe you've seen things that are different or they're out there that you don't necessarily agree with. Okay, but what are you willing to risk to get what you're really looking for? If we know the spirit's out there, you know, maybe we put too much emphasis on being right and not being wrong and all that kind of stuff instead of just saying, I'm going to seek for what's out there. And I'm going to get, probably get it wrong a few times. You know, on the day of Pentecost, when they were uh, filled with the Holy Spirit in the temple, <clears throat> it wasn't like they knew anything about what was coming. Mm -hmm. Okay, Except with, uh, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And they saw this, and it was, they saw this transformation in their lives. It was like an addition to their life. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's like I tell you, You've got a choice. You got a shovel, or you got a backhoe. Now, you can get the hole dug, but with a backhoe, it is so much easier to do it because it's not just you, but you're not controlled by the backhoe. It's not you have a shovel and the backhoe. Mm -hmm. You're in the backhoe doing the work. And I think if we look at it that way, because the objective, our our objective as a Christian is the same objective as Christ. So. The Holy Spirit, what did he call you? The Comforter. And I think that most tells me he's not the taskmaster. Mm -hmm. He's not one wanting to humiliate you. Mm -hmm. I think we've seen people who somehow, I, I don't understand the psyche. You're, you're, you're the doctor in psychology, so you tell me, what's the psyche of someone making it hard, difficult, or fearful? I don't understand that. Yeah. Well, and I don't, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think, I think part of our brain wants proof. And so we have to make it hard to make sure that whatever we're experiencing is real or genuine or whatever else. And it's like, you know, I prefer the method of show up, right? Show up. If he's, if it, if you need the tool, he has to give you the tool. Otherwise you're not doing his work. And, you know, I think that's the thing is to really build faith. And this sounds a little heretical, but to really build faith, you have to test God. And he's going to test you back. That's what builds faith, is you have to step out and say, I think this is what he's telling me. I feel it deep down inside of me. I think this is what it is, and I'm going to step out and do it. I'm not going to do, you know, I'm not going to wait for the rest of my life to do what I feel like he's telling me to do. i got to step out there, and then it's his responsibility to show up. Well, 
Doesn't that confirm the scripture where God said, try me and see that I am God? Exactly. He's yeah. He's afraid. I mean, if it's, it's like if the little boy says, okay, can I catch you? And you're like, jump, kid, jump. I am totally sure. <laughs> right. I think that's the way God is. Yeah, try me. I'll be there. I'm, I'm not going to go away. I'm not fake or foolish or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But I, I really wish we had a way of conveying that to, number one, it's not about speaking in tongues. It's a gift. Mm-hmm. But it's about the giver. Mm-hmm. Now, I've always said, of all the gifts of the Spirit, I could have one or I could have the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit use me for whatever I need to be. Mm-hmm. So. Well, and I think the root of that is to get up and do. Mm-hmm. Go do. You know, every day God's going to give you something to do because he's he, he not, I mean, I'm not saying there's not days that he gives us rest, but every day there's something to do. Every day we should get up and say, what, what do we do today? Not what do I do today? Not what do you do today? What do we do today? Yeah, yeah. I think one of the biggest hassles I've ever seen growing up Pentecostal, one of the hassles I've ever seen was the fact of, as you touched on it, is people saying, well, what if, what if I'm wrong? What if I'm wrong? Okay. That seems to me like I'm more for trying to protect me than mm-hmm. I can protect God. And, you know, is God not big enough to take care of my intentions? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, and how many of, you know, how many of those experiences would you trade for one real experience? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. The man went and sold the whole, <laughs> you know, as it say, uh, the per- the pearl of the pearl of great price, right? He went and sold everything to buy that to buy that one piece of land because he knew it was there. You have to be assured that you know what's there. I'm not going to find it every time. Sometimes I think I don't find things because he he's he's testing to make sure not to make sure it's true, but because what costs you little is worth little. And so sometimes you have to seek and you have to look and you have to press forward. And sometimes I get confused and overwhelmed and I don't know what the right answer is and I don't know where I'm at. But always on the other side of the con- of the confusion, the pain, the pieces that I don't understand. And I don't mean confusion like I don't know who God is. I know who God is. Sometimes I don't know who I am. Mm-hmm. But I always find that there's pearls on the other side of that. You know, when I struggle, it gives him a chance to come through. And the one thing you can say is struggle will tell you how determined you are to receive the gold, the prize, or whatever mm-hmm. it is. You know, one little hole, no. I know there's a diamond there. I know there's a diamond there. Mm-hmm. I dig up the whole field till I find the diamond. Yep, absolutely. And, and the good news is, the more I dig and I don't find the diamond, the less I have to dig more. Right. Like, a- I know, did it? Absolutely. I think that must be a psychology <laughs> thing, because that's 100% true. It's like it's like I tell the kids sometimes, like, every, every you know, I talk to them about finding the person that's right for them, and I tell them every relationship that you're in will end in failure until you find the one that's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and if we try to make it work, then we're in trouble. Yep. Okay, thank you, Bear. Um, I wanted some more. You, you Getting good insight on this, I think your perspective is so good. It doesn't come from a, a, a jaunted perspective or a, a, this hyper-religious perspective, but a down-to-earth perspective. So right on that again. Yeah. Thank you, bro. Thanks, Paul. Hey, y'all. Thanks for joining us for Around the Supper Table. At Sanctuary Family Farms, we want to be real whether that's through our blogs, daily verses, or even Nana's recipes. We want to share the messages that God has laid on each of our hearts. If you liked what you heard today or want to get in touch with us, you can find us on Facebook and YouTube at Sanctuary Family Farms or our website at www.sanctuaryfamilyfarms.com, where we share our recipes and blogs and sell farm-fresh beef and pork. We can't wait for you to join us again for next week's episode.